So hi, I'm good. I'm here to show you how the uh, this thing I made kind of works from a problem solving point of view, I guess. You know, what type of problem does this actually solve? Because, you know, I can't just say like, this is how it works, but you know, what problem does it actually fix? Um, so, uh, you know, a regular currency solves a couple interesting problems. So cryptocurrency and blockchain. If you don't know what these things are, I'll write a loose description to really get a full idea of how this stuff works. You're going to have to kind of read the Bitcoin white paper you know, twice and really take in how the game rules are um, used in order to make that thing secure. Uh, Alright, so cryptocurrency. It secures value and transfers value between many third parties without a specific source securing it. That's what blockchain and Bitcoin does. Naturally, you can use this to secure any value or any serializable data, like company stock, for instance. So in the future, instead of having a, you know, an exchange hold stock in order to be traded around and figure out what market value there should be for it, um, you know, instead it's just based in this digital world where you know, at the moment it gets placed to there, it's immediately tradable 24-7 in perpetuity uh, anywhere in the world to anyone who wants to own it. Um, so you know, this is why blockchains are, you know, kind of insanely valuable, or at least they're much more valuable than the similar systems they could replace. Um, so proof of work, like the way you use, the way the security mechanism on Bitcoin works, um, only really secures the top three blockchains. You know, you could possibly secure the top five, maybe the top 10 at most, but beyond that, um, there's the idea of this 51% attack that can be performed where a large group comes together, um, you know, does a whole bunch of things that have a real world impact, and then they outwork that chain to make a new chain that technically has more security, and the idea is that you trust the linkage with more security, whatever that means. So you, you know, you do a rollback craft essentially, and, uh, you know, double spend things. So you buy things and you get your money back, but you keep your thing. <clears throat> so, you know, if you did this with million dollar purchases or on like an exchange or something, you could cause a lot of havoc really fast. Um, so, um, because only like the top three blockchains are really secure, um, this leads to an encapsulation effort to secure many forms of value under one blockchain so that in the future, any stock can be launched in a blockchain, get all the benefits of being on a blockchain and still be secure. So this is what Ethereum does. Ripple kind of does this with encapsulating currency, kind of. Um, so, you know, that's what problems they solve. So this decaying DAG coin thing. Uh, it's asynchronous, user size, scalable data rate. So the fewer users, it doesn't go very fast. With a lot of users, it goes very fast. It loosely secures value. Basically, doesn't secure value at all, actually. Uh, this is not a currency, it's just keeping track of things that will become useful later on, but not when it's made, which makes no sense. All right, when a user throws machine power into the network, that user will receive an amount of network value abstracted as a crypto coin. So when many users contribute machine power into the network, after enough time, coins will be distributed roughly proportional to each user's contribution of machine power over recent time. Okay, so if there's a million people using the network, and then 99% of them leave, the 1% of the people that are remaining will eventually claim all of the coins for themselves. If all those million people came back after, you know, some time passed, all that currency that that 1% of people had would then be redistributed back to all those newcomers. So, you know, it, the coins travel to whoever is adding, uh, power to the network and updating it. So this has, uh, yeah, you spend normal cryptocurrencies, but you steal this one. Uh, it has high inflation, low security, on account of every user being a thief. Terrific. Uh, so network evaluation. So the Bitcoin blockchain evaluates to a list of accounts and their Bitcoin value ownership. So that's what the database represents. The Ethereum blockchain evaluates to define a machine state of the Ethereum virtual machine. So you can basically think of the Ethereum uh, blockchain as a big key log and the Ethereum virtual machine as, you know, the machine you're putting that key logger into.
to just feed all those keystrokes back into and then replaying whatever it is and then you stop at a specific point in time and say this is the defined machine state at this point in time so you can use ethereum as a general purpose uh, use case of um, a blockchain so this directed acyclic graph thing evaluates to allocated voting power on broadcasted topics at any point in time that's the goal all right so let's go over things so democracy is the idea of users ruling users the online space doesn't really have it you know in most things in the online space you have a group of moderators or you know a high power user that can basically delete the entire network at will if they want um, you know some people can just be banned outright and be, you know be refused off the network uh, you know there's a lot of problems with the online space it's like well it's the bastion of free speech but at the same time free speech is quelched quite often when you say inflammatory or just really stupid things um, or sometimes you don't get squelched and it's unfair for that reason too where you just you can talk all you want and uh, you just get shared more and more for some stupid reason I don't know so the online space doesn't have it you can't trust websites to validate their users for you anyone using reddit upvotes or YouTube likes or views or subscribers as a metric of trust on that topic post person is doing a disservice to themselves so uh, you know the one big problem is having to trust a website so whenever you go to like Amazon or something um, you know you can have user reviews but you don't know if those users are real or how much they've spent or if they even bought the product to begin with like how do you validate this type of data uh, you know how do you as a user validate the type of data the website might have access to things that could let them validate this stuff but they're probably not going to provide those metrics to you as a user of their service you know you could give away market data essentially um, so anyone everyone's opinion is valuable but many don't have the time or will to voice it especially about things that do not concern them now I'm led to believe my core audience likes my videos but a different audience could hate my guts so what is the true rating among all people and you know whose opinions do or should I even care about you know if a four-year-old called me stupid I wouldn't really take offense to that you know, their opinion doesn't really affect me uh, meanwhile some people say far too much or strongly evocative and easily alter the opinion of large amounts of people which is unsuitable for reading a genuine response so for reddit you're trying to figure out what type of stuff should be shared or what type of stuff is important but you know if you take something and then you add tits to it it's probably going to be promoted more than the same thing without that additional uh yeah all right so one user one vote so voting is only fair if there are a small number of things to vote on each within a common person's understanding and you gather votes from a representative sample so you know if you had a ballot measure right or if you had a ballot right and on that ballot you had 12,000 things to vote on okay that's a problem and then each one of those things was some type of strange uh, statement you know like do you believe that turbo encabulators should be uh, you know heavily regulated in text it's like well what is what does that even mean like what is a turbo encabulator um, so you know people wouldn't might not understand that type of stuff and then you have to gather all the votes from a representative sample hopefully everyone but getting everyone to do something is kind of difficult so you know at least a representative sample so you know if you take your sample and you ask a bunch of eight-year-olds what they thought of turbo and cabulators, they would really not be able to tell you anything useful you would get votes back yes but would those votes have any meaning probably not so there's too many topics there's not enough time to vote on everything unless you're a bot uh, what if your topic is never brought up for vote I mean like you know you got those bunch of eight-year-olds and you never asked them about if recess should be extended they wouldn't really have much stake in the whole democratic system to begin with so uh, you know the next problem is blind emotionless uh, continuous participation regardless of its value is I can ironically make a user seem more valuable so that person who was able to actually fill in the 12,000 bubbles on that measure or on that you know voting ballot um, could be seen as a, mo a more valuable voter for some reason or in the case of reddit there's karma whoring or in the case of YouTube's heydays there was a person like reply girl 
Um, you know, all that stuff is just really bad. It's like you don't want that type of stuff to occur. So, you know, and then if you have an opinion about everything, is your opinion actually valuable? Uh, as Kanye West once put it, probably, uh, what the fuck does Lady Gaga know about cameras? So, you might not care what that person has to say about that specific topic. So you just shove their vote out of the way in order to get a vote from the people that actually matter on that topic. <clears throat> All right, so imagine a small subreddit. Um, you know, it, one user makes 100 bot accounts. This could be accomplished fairly easily. You know, and each bot has, you know, a chance of interacting with a post. The owner of the bots, there's a high chance that the bots would upvote the bot owner's posts a high chance that the bots would downvote the non-bot owner's posts and, you know, then randomly do whatever else across all the other sort of places on Reddit in order to mask usage. So, you know, there's just these bots going around doing all sorts of stuff, but they're only really putting out uh, an amount, a tiny amount of bias towards one user and that all the other um, noise is masked. So how do you as a user detect this? So site owners can track IP addresses with a GUI, I hear, CSI, but those can be spoofed or botnetted. Um, so in this instance, a bot lord could claim a 50 upvote swing on every one of his posts, so, you know, along with masked usage. So here is some video content, um, some stuff by Veritasium, and I forget what that last thing is. Uh, so here's an improvement. You allocate voting power to users, if a user votes on 100 things, their voting power is divided by 100. And if a user only votes on one thing, their voting power on that one thing can outweigh many power users. So, if too many topics get brought up and a person starts voting on literally everything, um, eventually what they say has no meaning. Meanwhile, the one person who's really sure about that one thing they want, uh, you know, a lot more um, stake is put in that one thing they really care about. But in the online space, a power user could just make 10 accounts. So now we're back to trusting someone else to verify their own users for you. So why would I trust any website to accurately, accurately verify their own users on an anonymous network like the internet? How do I trust that your users are real? So this is cryptocurrency, what is this slide? I don't know. So blockchain solves an important problem of securing serialized data without known participants with a low data rate, security-backed, lossless consensus database. We've all agreed to a formal set of rules that judge that the evaluated representation of a database, like Bitcoin account balances, is correct. And everyone who's connected to this network can go and verify this through the blockchain. So my similar system is a description of a database and associated pure math game that can significantly lower distrust in online media. So I posit that the system, if used, can drastically lower the relative agency of bots, power users, premium users, user farms, and advertisers on social networks. In the system, all users are now advertisers. Formal advertisers are simply users. This is not a blockchain. It has no security. It has no memory. It's extremely high latency. There's no ICO. There's nothing to sell. There's nothing to invest into. I don't even want your money. Uh, in saying that this is going to cost between 50000 and a million dollars to make, somewhere between there, I think a team of three or four people working three or four years combined, or three or four years, about ten man years probably of maybe support and development, could probably make this uh, work into some type of competent software. Um, so again, this is not a blockchain. Uh, in exchange, it has a very high data rate, so the data rate scales with the user base. So optimally, a, hundred, a million users can connect to the broadcast network with an 8 megabit per second connection. Um, that's kind of the numbers I have going right now. It's kind of a lot, but by the time this actually reaches, um, you know, a large enough user base for that to matter, you know, sometime like 2022 or like 2025, um, you know, an 8 megabit per second connection anywhere might not be that big a deal. Or multiples of these type of types of connections as you connect to, you know, tens or maybe hundred million users at a time on a broadcast network. So even if you don't have enough data rate, a, a user with a throttled or temporary internet can still receive a lossy representation of the voting map. So they can still kind of get an idea of what is going on in the network. Um, kind of like how you would approximate a 
image with a lower resolution image. So the goal is to produce an autonomous data broadcast network. The users of the broadcast network are trusted based on the amount of work they provide to the network. Excess disrupting work or network attacks are less rewarding than standard network compliance. And the evaluation of the database is a distribution of user trust at any given point in time. So you got all that? Cool, neato. Um, so this is just some, you know, I've, I've described some problems. Uh, hopefully in the next video I can convince you that the system is perhaps a solution to these types of problems, or at least better than trusting a random website forum or, you know, blank reviews from blank users who have no history at all. Uh, yeah, so... I'll see you in the next video.